Welcome to Dare to Dream podcast. The show has been nominated for two People's Choice Podcast Awards and a Webby Award. Dare to Dream is ranked in the top best podcast in USA in self-improvement on Apple Podcasts and ranks in the top podcasts in many other countries, including most recently high rankings in Italy. Thank you, Italy, this past week. Debbie Dashinger is a certified coach whose expertise is visibility in media. She coaches people to write a page turner book, takes their book to a guaranteed international bestseller, and she pulls back the curtain so her clients have the system to be interviewed on media and podcasts and get massive results. Debbie shows people how to find and use media exposure to locate their tribe, fill workshops, sell books, and gain exposure. If you would like your free fill-in template to discover what your message is out to the world, connect and receive your free gift at debbiedashinger.com slash message. Go to D-E-B-B-I, D is in David, A-C-H-I-N-G-E-R.com slash message. How about sharing wisdom? awareness, and healing tips along with ancient downloads. Are you a star seed or a light worker in the great awakening? Then you're here for the right show today because today we're going to explore spirituality and medicine. Debbie Dashinger's guest is Scarlet Raven, the founder and alchemist of White Fox, award-winning medicinal products of herbs, CBD, cannabis, and psilocybin. Scarlett's latest book, Psilocybin Transmissions, is a channeled book from the spirit of psilocybin. Scarlett is an international best-selling author, medicinal alchemist, and lover of horses who shares wisdom through public speaking and private one-on-one sessions. Scarlett has been studying and creating paths in medicine for over 20 years. Since 2007, her company, White Fox Medicinals, has been serving high vibratory organic medicine to people and has received rave reviews in Rolling Stone magazine, High Times, Healthline, Cannabis Tech, Magnetic Magazine, and Engadget. To learn more, visit her at scarletraven.com. This is Debbie Dashinger on Dare to Dream, and I welcome Scarlett Raven to the podcast. Thanks for being here today. Thank you. So I want to start out with your work with medicinals, as well as galactic connections, angelic information, plus wisdom healing and wisdom writing. It's interesting. Once upon a time, somebody might have said like, stick to one thing, you know, find your path and stick to it. But the (laughs) truth is, many of us in this spiritual healing world are hyphens, right? It just is. So all of this, was it always an obvious path for you? Or (laughs) not at all? (laughs) Not at all. (laughs) Not at all. My life has been um, a series of zigzags that are my outside reflection of what I was going through internally. So I had a lot of childhood drama and trauma to cleanse away before I was even able to get close to my soul's calling. Mm. And through the drama and the trauma that was also manifested on the outside, what was the one right thing you did that allowed you to get here? What a great question. As a child, when I started realizing that the world I had come into was completely different than the star realms that I still remembered. And I think that was a lot of what my inner trauma was, was the clashing of these two knowings and the one knowing of, okay, I'm a star being, and I'm here to create love and joy and and twinkling romance around me. And I knew that, and I carried that energy. And then to be experiencing a world that was filled with a lot of physical and mental and emotional pain and um, a lot of confusion. Cause as a star seed, 
someone could say something to me like an adult or a parent, hey, you can't do this. And I would know, but that's not true. That's, that's a limitation. Why, why are you sharing a limitation with me? So for me to even be able to conceptualize rules or limitations that were constantly banged into my head from every angle from society and school and all that stuff i think i had so much pain just not understanding why the fuck i even had to be here as i got to that certain age around six or seven years old where the pain was larger than the knowing of the star generation and where i came from and then it became okay how do i survive this place mm -hmm. and um I made a decision to really stay connected to plants and animals because they carried that same star consistency and that uh, the teachings that I knew would soothe my soul, they just innately expressed all the time. So if I was in nature, or if I was around an animal, um, I felt whole and I felt seen and I felt normal. And then now flash forward where I am, you look at my medicinal line, it's plants and it's animals. So every label I have, it's, it's animals and it's showing you my best friends that saved me and were my medicine as a kid. And then it's bringing in the plants that I spoke to and I still speak to. Like people would be like, oh, don't you feel alone? And I'm like, there's like 200 conversations going on around me right now with this forest and the lavender plant. And I was like, what do you mean do I feel alone? Like it's actually really loud in nature for me. And which makes, it harder to be around humans because then it's triply loud and humans carry so much more chaotic wavelengths than nature does for me. So that was my one thing that has carried me through like a, like mother Mary was holding me was like develop a really deep woven connection to animals and plants and you'll be okay. And so I did. That is so interesting. I'm so glad you shared that. And I'm excited later when we talk a little bit more deeply about some of your products, some of your amazing products. Now I understand why I see what I see. Now I understand about this book you wrote, why the plants would even speak to you and how you would be connected to the spirit. So that makes a lot of sense. And when you say Scarlet, knowing you were a star being at what level did you know do you mean that you know what planet you came from even as a child do you know your people your lineage were you a hybrid yeah um yes to all of it so as a child i knew i came from a star cluster i couldn't tell you if there was a name or anything child meaning i think five and under and when i would have like a, a crying fit or kind of an emotional meltdown, my cry and what I would verbally share would be, I wanna go home, I wanna go home. And that was in my head, I was looking at stars. I was looking at my star place. So that's what I remember from being a little in. And then this year, thank goodness for the massive awakening that has done this to all of us because it gave me a pause. And in, uh, I was in California then. So March, when California shut down, my life before that, um, very busy and very full, running a company, lots of meetings, all that stuff. And then it stopped. And I had all this time for me and I was so happy and I really used it. And so I did all this breath work stuff with a, a counselor and I was doing so much self-improvement, gorgeous things. And one of the practitioners led me through a breath work for 45 minutes. You do the exact same breath and they coach you. So if you get tired, they're like, keep going. Cause it sucks. <laughs> and after like two minutes, you're like, oh my God, why the fuck did I sign up for this? But you go through because you know, it's going to be worth it. So it's basically <sighs> for 45 minutes. So the first, and I'm laying down, my eyes are closed. And this I'm just is like, like Lamaze breathing. Like when you have a baby. <sighs> yeah. Okay. Yeah. So the first 15 minutes, excruciating pain. Like, like my muscles were doing things I couldn't control. I had, I had so much pain and she was just like touching my feet. She was like, keep going. Mm -hmm. And then I got to this place where I, I don't want to say I left my body, but my awareness of how big I am and where I came from expanded to my origination. And I could feel my consciousness in my body. I didn't leave my body and look down. I was just hyper aware of my home while I was in my body. 
And my home was this star cluster that was kind of catty corner to Alcyon. So there was all these visions and downloads of we're not a part of the Palladians, but we're cousins too. And mm. the, the vibrational quality of where I come from is encapsulated in the star seeds of eternal youth. So there's what they told me was there's about a thousand of us on the planet now with one specific intention of staying very childlike, staying very curious and always having this naive quality that's attached to wisdom. So it gives us the child eyes in every situation. And I got to walk around this star and it's like crystalline palaces that had opalescent rainbows on the columns and one of our fun daily activities was creating these water um, like water bubbles but you could pick them up as if they were staying encapsulated in a water and then we would put rainbows in them and we would throw them down to planet earth and they would go energetically into these different things and if when humans would come in contact with them they'd feel a rush of joy and a rush of curiosity so we had all these little tricks that we would kind of do to raise the vibrational qualities on earth. And they were showing me how we studied from the animals there and we studied from the plants there. And these are hyper intelligent star beings that take these different forms and teach us these different connections. And so that was my medicine. And it was all of this download. So for like 30 minutes during this breath, breath practice, that was my experience. And I got all this information. And what it did when I woke up was like, now my entire existence makes sense. Everything I like makes sense. Everything I didn't like makes sense. Everything I've, I've done to never be a part of mainstream society totally makes sense. Like I would actually get physically sick if I ever tried to force myself into some type of norm, like a nine to five job or a class at school, anything that was very, um, pressurized with limitation, I would get sick inside of it. And so there is something innately inside of me that says, this is the path you have to follow. And if you don't stay on it, you're going to die. And it was that type of extreme for me growing up. So a lot of my early diagnosis is, oh, she's bipolar or oh, she's, she's, um, has depression, put her on these meds. And it was, there was nothing wrong with me, but the environment was so fucked up. And I would sit in class. I remember being in like fifth or sixth grade or something and being in kind of a free form art class and the teacher giving us clay. And I started like adding uh, my pencils to the clay and I started adding like stuff from my shoe and all these different things that I found around it. And she basically, she said, you just ruined this project. This was a clay project. And I remember looking at her like, why are you all so fucking limited? Like, what is with this mental limitation? And I have to tell you, Debbie, like that's my number one frustration still is um, why do these people always think they're so limited? And why are they listening to external information sources instead of listening to their soul inside of them, which is 10 times, 10 million times more wise and beautiful and secure and strong than any external source? So I carry this confusion inside of me and I get the human quality of the soul growth and everything, but I still prefer to be around plants and animals most of the time. <laughs> yeah, that's really fascinating. Any tips that you got while you were doing the breath work, visiting this planet, having this maybe parallel reality or future past reality experience? Any tips that you had while you were there that you could bring back and incorporate in your life or your business? Yes, I think levity. So when you're in joy and curiosity and play, if you think of those three words as a temple that you can enter into vibrationally, and you can honestly cultivate that as a practice within yourself, you levitate your vibrational frequency to one that's very high. And when you're in those higher states, you're so susceptible to higher downloads or guidance or like what you said, um, you feel the energy and you follow it. When you're in those higher vibratory states, that universal flow can so hold you. And uh, I think because of how deeply I feel energies, I can have intense emotions. I can be intensely angry and I can be intensely mad. And um, for me, it's remembering, hey, if you don't wanna feel that, 
remember the pyramid, the joy, play, curiosity, because every moment is really just an opportunity to tune your perceptual lens. How do you want to see this? How do you want to interact with this one situation? And if you want to have a high vibratory experience, then you just, I make that conscious choice. That's joy, excellent. play, curiosity. You have a very successful company. I mean, that's so wonderful. All these magazines who have written raves about your products and high visibility there. So while you're building your company, White Fox, did you encounter along the way any business bumps? And if so, what were they? Yeah, um, I, I tried to take my company brand. It started off as a cannabis brand. So I had a whole line of topicals and tinctures. And I was noticed by a very large legal cannabis company that was local to my town at that time. They saw a lot of potential in me and they said, you know, we want to invest in you and help you go legal and help you get huge. And we love what you're doing and we support local women. And I believed them. <laughs> I believed them and I believed what they said. And I was so green at large business contractual deals. I didn't, I didn't know what I was doing. The head person who had founded that large company, he himself put $100,000 into my company. And he also owned the company that stated, we're going to take you legal and make you really successful. So I thought he had my best interest in mind via assumption and didn't have him create a contractual agreement around that statement. So I put all my money into an ancient Ayurvedic vape line with cannabis and was educating people on um, mystic dreams was one of them, how to have lucid dreaming. The other one was um, increasing sensuality and sexuality for women, helping with PMS and menopause. And then for men, it was about tuning them into higher sensitive vibrations. So they're not so bro -y, kind of, you know, <laughs> but like having more femininity come into the masculine. And so that was my marketing campaign. I spent all my money and I got there. And then as soon as I did that, they were like, okay, JK, we're actually not going to work with you anymore. And so I went through um, lots of like lawyer meetings and got a... And who was JK? I just, I, they, I just said that as they were just kidding. It actually oh. turned out that this person, what he likes to do is find people that could be potential competitors in the future for him. He likes to take them out before they get to market. And wow. what I found out was that I was one of 10 companies that he had done that to. Oh, and they have so much money. It just doesn't matter. A hundred thousand is like, whatever, mm -hmm. just like get her off the market. So, um, that was actually, it was a really, really beautiful experience. I grew so much and that's why I crush it at business now because no one can really do me like that anymore. And I got done so hard that I'm also really compassionate to people that are kind to me and it's amplified a lot of beautiful things. Mm -hmm. So, um, yeah, I, I, that was my biggest one. I know that you take everything you do and be out into the world. Once upon a time before our current world situation, you were a public speaker. Mm -hmm. And I know you also offer private one-on-one -on -one sessions. Can mm -hmm. you tell me more about that? I'm very, very curious. What kind of session do you offer somebody? Yeah. So my sessions are like, we'll pretend you're getting a session, Debbie, and you would, we're on the phone and I say, okay, Debbie, what's your intention right now? Is there something you want to work on pattern? You want to shift trauma that you sense is there something holding you back, whatever it is, it can be physical, spiritual, emotional, whatever. So we pinpoint the intention and on my end, what's going on is as soon as you state your intention, your higher self comes into my vision. Um, my eyes are going to be closed and I can see you on a screen and whatever is meant to be shown to you or you're meant to experience throughout our time together. I just repeat verbatim what I see and feel and hear, and it's all for you. So I make myself a hollow bone and then I kind of channel your higher self, your guides, different beings that are going to come in to help whatever's meant to shift to shift. So People can experience DNA upgrades, past life regression, time travel to kind of correct a memory, not correct a memory, but reset a memory. And um, 
physical healings. Like, why did I get in this accident? This was really weird. We can go into, oh, what was the spiritual contract? Should we go to the Akashic records? Mm -hmm. But I don't make any decisions during the session. I'm, I feel like I'm just a, a reporter. I'm just telling you what I'm seeing and feeling. And what a lot of my clients feel on the other end is, they feel the energy moving. They feel the emotional releases. They often will go back to these places visually also when we're in this space. So it's, there's a lot of feelings going on and a lot of shifting. And there's a couple of weeks of integration afterwards also, because it is, this is, so for me, this is how I see us as humans. This is our densest form, whatever you can see with your eyeball, you're seeing the densest form. That's only 3% of this entire universe. I'm working in the 97% that you can't see, not you specifically, but that people can't typically see with their human eyeballs. It's all the subtle energy fields. It's all the extraterrestrial fields. It's all the other- Junk forms. DNA, right? Yes. Junk DNA is like the largest percent of us. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so that's the realm that I live in outside of sessions. And that's the mm. realm that I invite people into when they're having a session. Sounds yummy. It's really <laughs> yummy. And I was excited to see you love horses. I spent a day last week and I was invited out to Ojai to a horse ranch. Not oh. typically my thing. Like I haven't ridden since I was a kid. And it is as a therapy situation, you know, with uh, thoroughbreds and quarter horses, which are these are giant beasts. These are like 1200 pound, massive, gorgeous mofo creatures. Mm -hmm. And I, yeah, I never know sometimes how I'm going to show up, but the truth is I fell in love. I was kind of having a thing with this man horse, this horse <laughs> named Flash. He was so beautiful, like wolf. Mm -hmm. And he kept coming up behind me and with, you know, they have giant nostrils and he was just with this enormous gush of air coming out of his nostrils into my ear, just blowing in my ear over and over. And like, I don't know what was happening in the bubble over his head, but it was like, whew. You know? <laughs> I do. It was so beautiful. Yeah. And I got to be in this, a pen. It's not a pen. It's a, a corral, I guess you'd call it with him. And there were all sorts of things I could play with. And I just ran, I made, I made a choice, you know, once I got present inside the corral, I ran up and whispered in his ear, Hey, I want to check out the corral because there's lots of cool stuff. And then I might want to play with some stuff, but just because I'm over there playing doesn't mean you're not invited. So I hope <laughs> you'll come over. And there was this massive uh, medicine ball that you could push very easily. And I pushed it several times and he came up with his nose and pushed it back. So that was awesome. Oh, that's so sweet. Yeah. And then there was a big sort of bell. It's not very heavy, actually, a Kong bell. Yeah. And I would bring it up to him and he'd hold it in his teeth. And oh. I'm like, oh my God, goodbye. Oh. Like, he's so amazing. And yeah. the coolest thing was there was this big, huge blue barrel that apparently once upon a time they made kombucha out of. And it was on its side and I was having fun rolling it and flash this gorgeous hunk of burning <laughs> horse came up and I thought oh, it would be so cool if he pushes the barrel back but yeah. you know I love the universe always has to top me with, with my attention no flash walks over and finds a way to pick it up and he writes the entire barrel <laughs> off of its side and puts it back how it should be and like everybody was whoa <laughs> So genius, so beautiful. Mm -hmm. Like what a what an amazing day I had. I felt yeah. just so blessed to like hug this horse and spend that time. So you love horses too. I'm so happy you spent that time too. <laughs> yeah, I do. I have a horse. She's <gasps> my heart. Sure. What is her name? Denali. Oh my God. Do you spend time with her every day or every, every day, a few hours every day. And a lot of the reason why I'm in Colorado now is because of her. I want to live with her mm -hmm. and I want to live with her, like in the pasture with her. So my home that I'm going to build, the horse pasture is going to go around the entire home. There's going to be no division between her and I, and I want to put a, um, because you kind of tapped into one of my favorite things when they nose you and breathe and it just sends those like little goose pimples all through your body and you're like, 
<laughs> like that's the best ever. So I want to have an outdoor clawfoot tub in the pasture so I can be out in the middle of the night in my tub and her nose can come in and just sniff different parts of my body. And I can have that full merging. Like, mm. yeah. Yeah. We're about to live as one. <laughs> You are. Wow. That's divine. Mm -hmm. I'm already there by the way. So <laughs> if I got really quiet, it's because I'm already living in the tub in the nighttime with the horse. Right? Being, it's like, oh yeah. How big is your horse? She's huge. She's 16 too. She's a thoroughbred. Mm -hmm. She's massive. And you ride her too? She, I do. She's been in rehab. We had surgery in March on her hawk. So she's been in rehab for that. But mm -hmm. I think spring next year, I'll start getting on her again. Ooh. Okay. Well, yeah. thank you for sharing that. That's so gorge. <laughs> so gorge. Yeah. I want to talk about this, which is what initially, as I shared with you, when I got the pitch about this, I'm like, oh, for real. This is a done deal. But this is so, this is so cool. I think it's so unique. Mm -hmm. It really is so unique. And so your book, um, I just want to talk maybe about a few passages first. Your book, Psilocybin Transmissions, on page 13, you write, I ate 1.5 grams, which is not a lot. However, it was a sacred cocoa blend with other herbs to activate mental awareness and bring supported opening. So if somebody has also ingested psilocybin, magic mushrooms, I wanted to ask you, what were the activating herbs that you blended with the mushrooms and the cocoa? Why those herbs? What did it do? That blend, that's a, no one's asked me that. What a good question. So Because I want to do it. <laughs> I actually started, um, I started making them for friends and family because it was such a profound journey. So mm -hmm. that blend was Damiana. Damiana is a, a sensuality inhibitor, not inhibitor, um, a sensuality activator. And for my body, so initially when I made this blend, I was focused on myself. I wasn't focused on the great, the greater population. So my intention was if I, if I activate my sexual centers and I tune into that area and I focus on my Kundalini rising, I want to amplify my heart field and I want to feel more connected in that way. And so I went for Damiana and that was the, for me, it supercharges my root chakra and it gets energy moving through my, my second chakra, my sexual chakra. And then it also expands my heart vanilla bean, which is an antidepressant, kind of a joy, joy booster. Um, mucuna purines, which is an adaptogenic herb. It's from India. That one specifically, if you ever experience like a little anxiety or butterflies in your tummy right before you start tripping, it's a good, it's a good antidote to that sensation. So you can have more of like a smoother um, setup before you start tripping. And then Muama Puama Bark, which is a heart expander, a love expander, cacao butter. So lots of fat. I added a great deal of fat to it, which, which always amplifies the amount of electricities in your system. And I know I'm missing one herb, but I can get it to you after the show. Um, but it was a euphoric blend and it was there specifically to have me have a very smooth intro into the journey and then while i'm in the journey experience more love and more expansion in my heart field oh, and wow. i'm really hyper focused on like my my pussy my vagina my sensual my womanhood and really stepping into owning the sexuality of me owning my power as a woman i'm reading the book pussy right now which is womanhood revolution, reclaim the word as something positive. And so that's also a big focus in my own medicine journeys right now. Oh, that is so great. So maybe that'll be your next book. Yeah, it it'll be <laughs> Pussy Transmissions. So I'll, I'll definitely have you back on for that one. That'll be an awesome conversation. That's like uh, the sequel to Yoni. Um, yes. <laughs> So I, you know, I have so many questions about that and thank you. So I'm gonna, just going to follow my own energy, I guess. The first thing is, you know, I love that. I love the alchemy of that. I'm totally going to experiment with that. That woof made a lot of sense on a lot of levels. And I really like the care 
you're talking about coming in and out and then the while you're there that all of these sustain Uh, something that I played around with and I still can't figure out is sassafras right so I know it's got a a great rap out in the world and if it's used correctly I mean um, I've even tried to create some MDMA but without using the meth part of MDMA but there's so many different things you can do but the sassafras thing is like it's been so benign. I've had the tea, I've ground it up, I've, I've baked it, I've caked it. I've... <laughs> Do you have any 411 on how sassafras can be used as a euphoric? You just sparked my curiosities. Mm-hmm. I remember hearing about sassafras 10 years ago. I remember having a tiny bit of interest and not going that direction. And hearing you talk about it right now, it has a lot of weight. I feel like it could have a lot of weight with a psilocybin journey. It would be something really smart to start playing with. Yes. Because it does have, it has such a strong fire to it, which is why I like to use cacao. And whenever I'm adding fire to an intentional visioning process for myself, I think of it kind of as like vision rocket fuel. So I could see sassafras coming in and playing a really, a really grounded fiery role in the journey itself and maybe expanding the visioning process out to another realm because for me each herb has its own realm that it works with and sassafras is definitely like indian deity vibe realm and maybe it's attached to kali i don't know Hmm. but yeah that would be one to smart smart for bringing that up i don't know anything about it but i would play with it okay yeah i i would love a door into that because i I've tried, but it's just, that's not my expertise. You know, yeah. I'm a, dr- I'm a drinker. I'm not an alchemist <laughs> kind of thing. And I'm assuming when you talk about this concoction you've created, it was done in a brew and a tea. Yeah. Oh, oh, with the herbs and the chocolate. Mm-hmm. I made an actual, cho- I have a chocolate making machine. So I made an actual tempered chocolate and like put it in a really sexy glass container. And then I charged it with crystals around it for a few nights. And then I took it into ceremony. So I had, I have these like gorgeous, like apothecary funky shaped things. And whenever I'm going to have like a self awakening ceremony, I always pre-charge in these little domes and then so it was a scoopable chocolate, like it stayed kind of soft to the spoon and I just kind of sp- ate it. Okay. Yummy. That's mm-hmm. fantastic. Yeah. So I, I want to say this because there's always the assumption that everybody watching or listening knows this information. And I've learned that anytime I talk about any kind of medicine or spiritual healing, I feel like it's incumbent on me to also open the door to people who have curiosity but haven't stepped in yet because I've received enough email from people who have resonated <laughs> with this subject. And so I, I want to also cater to you and honor you because, hey, I've been there once upon a time, even though I was only two years old, but <laughs> kidding. But I understand <laughs> what it's like to not know. Started me. early, Debbie. Right? <laughs> Yeah, I did. Um, so um, actually the first time I did mushrooms, I was in my twenties. It was, oh my God. And I could talk on and on about why that was so amazing. And I always said, if I could go back and do one thing, it was a game changer when I started to talk to rocks and sticks and realize, oh, we really are all one. That was huge. Wow. So um, we have a spoiler. Oh, that's magic. That was a magic little blessing for you. It's funny you would use that word, Scarlett, because actually I was on a camping trip and I was having, I, I was, I used to have a lot of self-imposed limitations that didn't create ease about hiking if they included big rocks and boulders and things. And it was really uncomfortable to be around other people who could do all of that, and navigate that. And I just, everything was so scary to me. And so I was doing mushrooms on, I did it on several camping trips, but this one camping trip, I was actually in the middle of a stream when I came on and boy, everything else came on too. And suddenly the rocks were like, everything was tenable. Mm -hmm. The stick called to me and Mm -hmm. said it was a magic stick. And I used to call it Mr. Stick and I would hold it and it would say, you can do this and you can do that. And of course you and I know there was there's magic and everything. And I could have done it without the stick, but it's like, it was so perfect for me at that time. 
that something would come alive like that. And if you saw me on a video from like physically not able to navigate climbing over rocks and going through the water to suddenly I'm leaping over things with complete yeah. confidence and knowing, like, of course yeah. you've got me, of course I've got me. Yeah. And it was a game changer for me. Um, so yeah, that made me, that began my love affair with this. And so for people who don't know about it, what is psilocybin? It's not new. I just want to say, and by the way, there's some amazing books coming out about ancestry, about medicine dating, like pre-Christianity. I'm not kidding. They are doing archaeology DNA from jars and finding that ayahuasca was back then and psilocybin. So this is very ancient, used in indigenous cultures from pre-Columbian times to present day, religious, spiritual context. It is used for, well, it can be used for fun and joy and tripping, and it can be used for healing, absolutely. Psilocybin is a natural occurring psychedelic prodrug compound, and it is produced by more than 200 species of fungus. You will commonly hear it out in the street spoken as magic mushrooms. <laughs> and you know, there are clinical trials and I'm, I'm watching all of this, Right now, they're showing definitively it cures depression. It does. And so it is capable of so much more. And so I want to use that sort of as an entree into here you are. Uh, clearly, you experiment. You're very open. And I love that you set such a strong intention for yourself, but also the safe container on every level. And what did, when you entered this situation where this book was born, Scarlett, did you even know that it could happen? That suddenly a spirit would come alive and literally say, I have some dictation for you, girl. <laughs> I'd no. like you to sit down and pay attention. Do you, did you have any sense that could happen? No, no. And I actually immediately when it started, which is rare for me, I entered into resistance. When they first came, I was like, Oh, no, 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 I didn't sign up for this. I wanted that journey. No, I didn't. No, I wanted. <laughs> and I immediately caught myself and was like, oh, wow. Like, because the one thing I, I talk to people before they've done psilocybin and the one thing I've trained myself to do is really study and practice how to surrender before you have a journey. Because a big part of allowing the medicine to work through you is surrendering to whatever's occurring. And if you practice that while you're sober, then you have this tool that you can call upon if the trip gets hairy. And um, if, if you surrender, what happens is your energetic systems, they reopen. If you don't surrender and you get closed and you start creating barriers, that's when you feel intense resistance and resistance feels like shit in the human body. So um, yeah, they came to me and I, was looking at working less. So at that point, White Fox had just gone legal. I was having all of those issues that I explained to you before. So the, the journey really was like, what do I do? Do I just leave the legal industry and call it a loss and say, I fucked up. I didn't get a contract. And, and I take my brand into this herbal wellness CBD world, or do I fight through and try and make it on my own, even though it's going to drive me crazy and not create any happiness. And I was kind of like, what do I do? And so I was hyper-focused on White Fox. And then I, I go into this journey for clarity on that. And these beings are like, we want you to start a whole other company. And I'm like, no, guys, no. Like I told you, I'm already maxed with this one issue with this one company. So that's internally, I was like, no way, man. I'm barely handling this. But as soon as I saw my resistance come up, I called on that tool. Okay. I was like, no, you have to surrender Scarlett or this is going to get intense. And so I surrendered and I was like, okay, flow through me, show me what you have. Let's get to know each other. And they were talking to me about how large psilocybin has been misrepresented in our culture and how people are looking at it like this party drug and how that's okay but to also add a narrative around its sacred transformational vibratory qualities and to start training people like what you just shared was such a great intro into the story of how you came alive inside the stream and you saw the rocks, you saw the magic in the rocks, the stick had magical powers. 
So if you're in a high enough vibratory frequency, that's happening all the time when you're sober. It's a completely interactive global energetic net that you can pull on. And even if you're not in Poland, you can portal hop and tap into a forest in Poland. And all of that is completely available now. And I tell people that, and they're like, oh, you're crazy. And it's like, I'm not crazy. I experience this stuff regularly. And I'm quite lonely that no one's joining me here. So will you guys please fucking learn this shit? Cause it's fun. And that's like my one thing right now is I feel a little like, why can't people join me in this? Why do you have to question everything? You don't understand it. You feel it and then you're there. So get out of your head. But I, sorry, I, I sidetracked a little bit. It's a good, it's good though. It's true. It's I mean, true. The, yeah. the metaphysicians who are listening to this, we know this is so. So yeah. It's so. And so I live it. I live it. I live the connection, the connectedness and the plants are always talking whether I'm on drugs or not. And so this interaction with these spirits was they were, um, they were very driven for me to cross boundaries in this legal. So what the legal uh, law did was think of a chastity belt around the spiritual healing of psilocybin. They put a chastity belt around it. So what psilocybin did inside of our culture is it got the party label and it got this and it kind of got out in all the illegal realms and that's okay. It's great to get our toes wet that way. But when it comes to using this as a spiritual advancement technology, which is what it is, and it's very strong in terms of getting to these higher states of mind and then applying them while you're sober and completely advancing your evolutionary progress with very short time frames. And so they were showing me all of this as a technology and how important it is and how the foundation for every single thing I just spoke to, the only thing people really have to understand to get there is love. And so I don't have to go into the multidimensional net properties and I don't have to go into how it cleanses density to make you more vibratory available for higher downloads. If people focus on the quality of love and expanding love within their body, then they're there. They're already there. So that's what the whole mission is about. That's what the whole book is about. It's about love and it's about how to get to that vibratory state of love. And a lot of people, when they read the book, the feedback is like, I actually feel like I'm on a psilocybin trip while I'm reading your book. And it feels like my world gets a little wobbly. And I'm like, this is what I'm talking about. It says psilocybin on the book. You are working and interacting with psilocybin when you're holding my book. That mentality of limitation that you have to physically hold a psilocybin mushroom, put it into your physical body to have a trip. That is a very limiting belief system that you can interact with and play with in this realm, but you don't have to. Mm -hmm. You can have vibratory frequencies. So if people are open in their belief perceptual airways to that might happening, when they grab this book, they will have a psilocybin journey. They will have some kind of transformational experience. They might have visitations from these spirits while they're sleeping. And it's really that freaky connected with everything. Everything is just energy vibrating. So for us, HSPs are highly sensitive people. Like we're hyper aware of this because we can't not be. We're, we, we feel everything. And I think if people can train their mind to become, just whenever you have a belief, question it. Why is that belief there? And is it serving your unlimited qualities? And if you can get in alignment with your soul when you ask that question and it's a definite yes, keep the belief. It's probably serving you. But if you get like, uh, uh, just examine it, examine it and see if that's where you really want to go. Or do you want to expand? Mm. Okay. I'm just absorbing that. That was pretty profound. Uh, and I, I just admire you for being able to go there so rapidly, just so knowingly and knowing the truth of the illusion of this reality and what's possible. So you talk and have spoken before about star seeds, about galactic information and about your, uh, your private sessions. I just wanna see what's possible right now. And, and you'll have to guide me a little bit in asking this question because what I wanna do is open this up to see if, if from, your abilities from your talents and gifts in that realm, if you might be able to offer something 
that you feel collectively people watching live replay need to hear or receive right now. So if there's some kind of download you're receiving or some kind of guidance, I would love to hear that. Yeah, it actually started as soon as you started talking. <clears throat> and it, what a perfect day on 11.11. It's, it's actually super tied into 11.11. So they're showing me, um, as you were talking, I'm just gonna do like we were in a session mm -hmm. and I'm gonna close my eyes so that the vision can be kind of more crispy for the listeners. So as you started talking, kind of like um, an upside down beehive, different rings are coming up over your crown and they're using you as an example because you're the one Debbie who asked the question, but this is gonna be totally applicable to anyone else listening at any time because there's no such thing as time. So there's an upside down beehive shape and that's just for everyone to visualize this. When you visualize something in your mind's eye, it's real. Whether you see it with your human eyes or not, it is now there. So that just got set up above your crown. And what they're showing me is that the normal atmosphere or layers of energetic collective consciousness perceptions, they rest in the fourth dimension. So the core of the earth is the first dimension, the dirt and all of the different bacterial and viral beings live in the second dimension. We live in the third. The fourth is the collective consciousness. What is coming through for today, but is going to be applicable until the end of 2021 is different perceptual layers in the collective consciousness used to have a very dense, almost blocking ability for us to break through and get to the fifth dimension. And the fifth dimension is all about love and harmony, sex and orgasms, communication and love, communing with other people and a sense of joy and pleasure. That's the normal human state euphoria. There's been a brainwashing tactic to make people think that they're less than or that they're, they're unable to get to this euphoric joy, livable vibration. And they think that pain and suffering is normal. It's not normal, it's, it's the illusion. The illusion has been resting in the fourth layer of the collective consciousness. It's now disintegrating. And the disintegration actually started two days ago and it's starting to speed up as of today. This was the, this is what today did is it started opening that up two days ago. This is gonna stay open until the end of 2021 until there's actually no density in the collective consciousness and it's starting today. So I'm sharing this as, as just a call to your own personal internal action. If you can visualize this collective consciousness turning into light little literally rainbow specks of dust so that we can all shoot through vibrationally to the fifth layer, rest in joy, rest in pleasure, rest in orgasm, rest in creation, rest in the power, God, goddess that you are. That's where we're all going. And I think like I can feel it just talking about it. I can feel like an elevator sensation that goes through the cells of my body when I talk about this layer to the fourth, to the fifth. And when I woke up this morning and I was in the shower, I could feel the atmospheric changes in the collective consciousness and they're getting lighter. And then uh, just a container for everybody. It's super normal. It's super normal to feel fear when your reality changes. So have compassion for yourself, have love for yourself. If you get scared because everything you knew no longer is, that's okay. That's change and you're held. And just to remember that no matter what's going through and what's shifting for you throughout this next year to come, you're held and you're totally held in love. And you, if you're not experiencing the fear of change, then you're not going through the elevator fast enough. <laughs> but some people will feel fear and some people won't feel fear. A lot of people are living in that density and they're thinking that that's normal. And so for those people, it could be a little scary to shift into all pleasure, all joy, all orgasm. But we're all, that's where we're all going. Yum. Thank you so much. That's You're beautiful. Welcome. Thank you for gifting us with that. And yeah, I know what an auspicious day. I love that we're doing this today. 11, 11. Um, and if, if you look down at your clock and you see it's 11, 11, that's really like yeah. times four. So I want to talk a little bit about more yumminess. And so Let's see if I can do this so that people can see. Here's what's so cool. So like now I feel like I have this in-depth understanding. This, which I've been putting 
on my, this is a full spectrum CBD salve called Repair Remedy. Let me just show everybody. You can see I've been using it, so be quiet because it is so amazing. But I, also the smell. <laughs> mm -hmm. And I've been putting it on my back, on my left hip, you know, all these little places and spaces that like, ouchie. So we, what, talk to me about this. This is like whipped cream yeah. with little, what is that boat, that drink boba? Yeah. Do you know what I mean? With little bubbles yeah. in it, little pearls kind of, yeah. it's amazing. This yeah. thing is, it's so rich. Like, oh my God. Yeah. I, I, before I made that salve, I was using other people's salves and people always put like beeswax in salve and make it this kind of sticky. And I never liked that. And also when I put it on, I could feel that the medicine wasn't going into my bloodstream because it was resting on the top of my skin. So I wanted to make a salve that was all fat based, which is why mine is just organic coconut oil. And then I extract all my herbs myself over low heat. And I put in like willow and arnica and chamomile and helichrysum and all of these really juicy healing, like deep cellular healing herbs. And then when you put it on and it's got that fat base, it literally just drops right into your skin and into your bloodstream really quick. Mm -hmm. So people will experience relief in like 15 to 20 minutes. It's my favorite product. I actually do like a boob massage at night and I do a womb massage at night. I love the smell of it. <laughs> it is amazing. Mm -hmm. I just realized one thing I don't have when you were talking about your ritual is um, I also have your bath, uh, bath oh. beads, if you will. Yeah. Whoa, that was, yeah. and I'm a big bath person. That was really nice. Yeah. I love it, you know, because this is heat and it's water, all these beautiful activators, all these different ways to get this on and into your body. Mm -hmm. It's very well yeah. thought out. Yeah. And my greatest spiritual transformations happen in the bathtub for sure. Hmm. I'm with <laughs> you. Yeah. I need to, I need to build a house around a bathtub. So here's some really amazing ones. I, of course, you know, disregard this red stuff is my writing. <laughs> I'm a nerd. I like to understand everything. So if I read up on something, I'll write myself reminders. So I also want to be sure I don't want to take the nighttime and the daytime and so forth. So this one was, oh, I like this one. So relax, anti-inflammatory and for the immune system, like, hello, could we all use this right now? Mm -hmm. I'm doing this on purpose and I'm hoping that this won't get bleached out so people can see, there we go. I'm yeah. going to slowly move this, not from my writing, because I want you to see everything that Scarlett has been talking about. I mean, first of all, the gorgeous labels and you can see the little bugs and creatures and yeah. animals and owls and all of that. Like this is so well thought out and all the information that's on here. These, you know, I'll tell you the worst thing about this white fox medicinal. There's one bad thing. It's the in-house fighting. <laughs> so a couple of nights ago, I was like, where, where the CBD oils go. It's like, well, I, I have them in my office because I'm interviewing her. It's like, well, like, can we put them someplace communal so I could share? So that's the that's worst awesome. thing is that everybody wants to participate, but actually. So this one, can you talk a little bit about this Sammy's? Mm -hmm. and, yeah. And this, yeah, it's so beautiful. What, what can we do with this? Maybe I should yeah. be taking it while you speak. I'm not yeah. sure. I'm a little <laughs> driven to. I think it's awesome. It's, it's all organic. So even the MCT oil is organic, every single thing inside of it. And then it's so good for allergies. I had an account mm -hmm. up in Calistoga at Calistoga Ranch. And every spring, the women that worked at the spa would get allergies and stuff. And I have shooters of all those tinctures, which is just this tiny little shot of a one single dose. And so the spa there carried the shooters and they primarily sold them to staff when it was the Sammy V's just be during allergy season because they could take a shot and then 10 minutes later, no puffy eyes, no runny nose, no scratchy throat. So there's a really high dose of Manuka honey in there and people are tuned into Manuka honey now, but it's so activating and it's so immune building and it's so great for allergy symptoms. And then there's bee pollen in there also, super great for allergy symptoms. And then 
it's an it's also a nervine tonic so for me it's a great meditative enhancement if you want to take a few doses 15 minutes before you go sit it'll really calm and hone in on your nervous system and if you are in fight or flight or if you are a little edgy that day it'll switch you into a harmonized state for your meditation what kind of meditation do you do my meditations it depends on the day and it can range anywhere from sitting and breathing and feeling all of myself. Like, Oh, I just want to feel all of me and call all of me back in. Like maybe I've been racing around through errands throughout the day. And then I have a meeting. I'll be like, okay, I want to do a 10 minute call in. And I just close my eyes and I breathe. And I'm like, come back, Scarlett, all of those random thoughts and those ideas and the to-do list reel it in girl. And just like get whole again. Um, I do a lot of bath meditation. So for me, it's about ritual and I call in the goddess Venus. And I'm, like I said, like a lots of feminine energy, lots of vagina and pussy powers. So I call in a lot of that energy in the bath. The water what does that look am- like, what is vagina and pussy power look like? How do you Great call that? question. In? So I am starting to have conversations with her, like pussy, what do you want to do today? Like, are you feeling, ha- do you want to go look at land that we're going to buy? Do you I feel like this. going to the ice cream shop? Like, do you want to go get a new pair of panties or do you not feel like wearing <laughs> panties? Like, what are you into today, pussy? And just giving her her power back to lead my life, you know? <laughs> and so I create these conversations and she always answers and she always has her own unique ideas. And sometimes it's something I didn't even think of. So it's, it's giving my focus back to her instead of ignoring her and thinking I have to plan stuff up here. And that's what I mean by that. So like in the bathtub, I'm like, okay, this is for you, pussy. This is for you. This is for your womanhood. This is for your goddess nature. This is for the electricity that creates the magnet that then allows you to be the creatrix of your own existence. Let's intentionally amplify that power now in the bathtub because anything you say or do or pray into the bathtub you just a hundred times that prayer. I mean, water is a conductor. So my downloads and transformational experiences, I've had the trippiest things come into my bath time. So what I did in my last house in California, uh, I had a cannabis grow. And then when I went legal, I took it out because I wasn't growing at home anymore. And I, the only thing I did to the grow room was put in a massive stand in the middle of the whole room with a clawfoot tub. And I made it like, Oh, like it was a thing. And people walk in, they're like, why'd you put it on that big stand? I'm like, because it's a fucking show, man. It's my bath show. It's important. It needs to be lifted up. Mm-hmm. And so I had this cloth with tub on a stand and I would get in and I would walk up the stairs in the middle of this room. I would say my prayers. I would get in mm-hmm. and I close my eyes and my internal meditation is witnessing and directing my energy towards amplifying, amplifying the goddess nature. Okay. So that's a ritual based one that I do. Another one is really just knowing that I'm all present when I'm outside, Mm. intentionally being present Mm. for me. I don't want to keep sectioning off meditation. I want my life to be the meditation. So I'm starting to do that weaving where it's Mm. not taking the time out. My time is now I'm doing it now. I'm making sure I'm all present with Debbie. I'm making sure I'm not, you know, where are my feet? I know where my feet are. Where are my hands? Just awareness. That's beautiful. Wow. Do I feel that tincture, by the way? It's it's unbelievable. Great, right? Great. And I just must make another pussy comment because the reason why I was laughing so much when you, I mean, also because you're sparking things in me. I've I've never heard the word creatrix before. Mm. I love that. Mm. Love that. And I will say it and give you credit. And why I thought that was hilariously beautiful what you were saying about pussy what will make you happy and what would you like would you like panties and where would you like to go and and pulling in and 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 giving a choice and all of that it reminded me of I have interviewed Ken Honda Ken Honda is very 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 famous in Japan and he wrote the book happy money and his whole premise is if you have a relationship with money and it's happy, why wouldn't money want to hang out with you? (laughs) And so it's a beautiful book about how he changed all these internal conversations. He speaks in front of gazillions of people about this. He's got a massive following. And so of course, if it's happy money, why couldn't it be happy pussy? 
Yes, the, girl. The other, I was also thinking about Marie Kondo, right? Marie yeah. Kondo is that brilliant woman, I think also Japanese, I believe they're friends. Mm -hmm. And she will come into your home and say, does this clothing make you happy? And if not, why are you keeping it? Why is it occupying? Why is anything occupying space in your being, your life, your closets, your home? If you're not interacting with it, it doesn't have engagement or contribution and it doesn't make you happy, then out it goes. That mm -hmm. makes so much sense. And so I love the fact that you are that intimate with your body. And I have to say with great passion that especially because so many women are so terribly disconnected and shut down around their bodies and judgmental around their bodies. So the fact that you create that level of invitation and love and conversation and happiness is yeah. really inspiring to me. Thank you. Yeah, it's our, I mean, I really believe it's our time as women to reclaim that power back. And like I was saying in the beginning about the belief systems that cause these limitations, women have been told that you know, if you're extra sexual, you're damned. And we can, I don't even need to feed that narrative anymore because we all know what it says. So what is the course correction there? And, and that was my internal discovery was I'm realizing that I too have limited beliefs. And I, whenever I discover one, I'm like, how do I course correct this? And I, I had, I had what you just spoke to. It was a big disconnection to my femininity because I didn't want to be seen as a whore. Mm -hmm. And I actually, I was an exotic dancer when I was 18 into my early twenties. And so I went through that uh, prejudice. I couldn't rent apartments if I told them where I worked. I couldn't go to my friend's weddings because the wife didn't want me there. So I went through all these series of judgments from close friends and family and housing complexes because I chose that line of work. And I think the amount of prejudice I did get, it, it did wound me mm -hmm. and my sexual femininity. And I'm at that place in my life now, 15 years later of reclaiming it and being like, actually, I was ahead of my time when I was 18, showing my pussy to everybody. I knew where my power was and I was making so much money. And there's nothing wrong with that other than the judgment of that, you know? So yeah, this is my, this is my replay, of course, correcting that. Mm. So, so pussy sovereignty. I like it. <laughs> Let's go there. Yes. Okay. So that, that was an awesome conversation just based on <laughs> one teacher. Um, the next one, and this comes in a really awesome, beautiful, almost hemp, maybe pouch called liberation. Mm -hmm. <sighs> Tell me about this one. Yeah, yeah sure that's a showing these. There we go. Yeah, they're a little bleached out, but you can see some aspects of them. They um liberation is vibrational attunement. So people know Bach. They know the um, I think it's called stress box stress release or whatever. And so they take different herbs and they put them into spring water and they sit them out over moonlight. And then you take the essence of that and you add some brandy because that will preserve the essence in terms of um, the spring water. And then you can take it and you can take it on your tongue. You can put it in your tea. You can put it in your bathtub. And what you're doing, that, that energetic woven field that we're all interacting with and that actually runs through your system, you're adding an intentional vibration of liberation. And what cannabis has gone through is liberation through her legalization. So she carries that um, I'm an outlaw and I'm coming out of the closet into the light. She carries that story within her vibes. So when we have a cannabis vibrational tincture like that, there's no THC and there's no CBD. It's spring water, the vibration of the flowers, and then the brandy. Yummy. It's mm. yummy. And then you just put a couple of drops and you are adjusting your vibrational facilities inside of your body. <laughs> yeah, just liberate saying. yourself. That's I made that for um, praying that people would liberate themselves from the mainstream media. <laughs> I was ah! like, liberate yourself. Stop listening to external sources. <laughs> just dare to dream. You'll get the real deal here. Yeah, go into your own head, man. Don't listen to them. <laughs> You're way better. Trust me. This is so perfect, right? This is like everybody, you know, everybody who listens to my show, people. This is. <laughs> this is who you'll be. I'm Liberate yourself. Saying. Yeah. <laughs> wow. And it really, this is delicious. I got to say. Yeah. It's, um, it's, 
it's pear, it's organic pear brandy from a local person in Santa Rosa. It's awesome. This is awesome. Oh my yeah. God. Baths, teas, anytime. Okay. This one, now this one, I'm going to flip a little bit. This one said daytime and vitality. Again, just disregard my writing, but I do want to get it right up here so people can see this gorgeous creature here. It, it'll hopefully, yeah. anyway, the hawk. the hawk. Yes. So this one is called on awareness and vitality, full spectrum CBD tincture. Tell us about this. That, that one. So I did a day and a night. That was my initial rollout. The whale is nighttime and relaxation. And then the hawk, which you have there, it's, it's an, yeah, there's the whale. It's an upper. So when you get up, if you're a caffeine person and you want to maybe not have caffeine, you can take a couple droppers of that and you will get a bump of energy in about 15 to 20 minutes. But what you're also doing is you're biologically imbuing vitality into the cells of your body through adaptogenic herbs. So the adaptogenic herbs, they go in and they're like, I want you to be naturally vital. I don't want to cover up your systems. I just want to give the body the lift it needs to heal itself. And so this is a, just a daily vibe of that. You're putting adaptogens in, you're putting maca in. Maca is not mm. only a great um, immune booster, but if you want to get those sexual wheels turning over time when you take maca, it can balance women's hormones, it can increase men's sexual. I mean, it has so many gorgeous qualities, maca. That is so interesting to me. You know, Scarlett, um, sometimes my, well, sometimes, obviously, all the time, my body intuitively knows things. And I, I went to a restaurant and they had maca coffee latte. And I was like, Ooh. well, that seems like an oxymoron, but I'm fascinated. So <laughs> I'll order one. And it really was that. It was a latte with ma maca in it. I'm like, oh my God. So divine. Oh my my God. body was just so thrilled. So we have organic powdered maca here. Mm -hmm. And I just now, ever since then, every day it goes into my coffee yeah. when it's being brewed. And I- People have said, you do what? And it's like, I can't explain, but you have to try it. Yeah. There's something, my body just goes, uh-huh, this is working for me. Yeah, yeah. That's a lot of our feedback. I have a client who works in a factory and he's like in his mid sixties and he was kind of still physically struggling. And he asked me what I recommended. And I said, try that. He started buying it by the 200 milliliter. He's like, I feel like I'm 30 again. He's like, I'm not even drinking coffee. And he said, after I took it for five days in a row, I wake up hyper. I, I go to sleep at a regular hour. I don't mm. have the body aches because at the same time, the CBD is taking inflammation out of your body. And when you're anti, when you're not inflamed, you're not feeling achiness, you're not feeling pain, and you're operating at homeostasis. So all of this medicine, it does take a mentality of, yeah, you're going to have felt feelings in about 15 to 20 minutes, but if you take it over time, and that doesn't mean forever, that could mean one month, that could mean two weeks, but if you take it consistently to where you hit your own homeostasis, mm. you're actually resetting your body, which, whereas if you go the pharmaceutical route and you take a pill, your symptoms will be gone, but you just did nothing for the root cause of why you're upset or why you're in pain. So I think there's a big clarification going on for people right now around pharmaceuticals too, through the, the awesomeness of all this CBD stuff. Yeah. What a great way to handle things. And so you mentioned earlier that you had, and it's hard to remember now if it was when you and I were chatting before the show started or during the show. So forgive me. So I'll, I'll catch everybody up. But the question is about sleep because I think more than ever, especially with everything going on in the world and people who are you know, it's interesting. What I really want to say is people are responding to the uncertainty, but I also think when you bring up highly sensitive people, I think so many people are sensitive, whether they know it or not. And when they feel the enormous uh, dimensional shifts and energetic shifts and that nothing really is going to be the same. And I think it's great. I think this was called for, but it is an uncomfortable, it's never comfortable often change. And it's like, um, I'm okay. I'm cool with it, but I know so many people are having trouble sleeping and so many people are having anxiety. If, if we well, you know, we don't want tranquility, right? Yes. We oh, want tranquility. Yeah. Excuse me. And also this one, which was the anti-inflammatory. So I'm just wondering of these two, 
And so this is the mm -hmm. Sammy V's just be. Mm -hmm. And this one is tranquility with the whale. And so mm -hmm. forgive me if these are bleached out doing my best here for you. But uh, what would you recommend that people use? Would, would they need both or one or? The, the tranquility is specifically made for what we're all going through right now. It's, it's our number one seller by far right now. The Sammy V's Just Be would totally work as well in terms of relaxing you. But the herbs that are in the tranquility are a specific nervine tonic. And when people get um, scared or the uncertainty causes anxiety, what happens is it starts taxing your nervous system. And when your nervous system is taxed for an extended period of time, you remain in a state of fight or flight. And then your ability to come from thoughts of balance and, and love field compassion thoughts becomes extremely challenging. So the tranquility is all about hitting that reset button, getting you out of fight, flight, or freeze, and then allowing your nervous system to start unwinding. And I think that for me, the like that's I drink that tincture every day. I don't experience anxiety, but I'm intentionally healing my nervous system. Mm -hmm. I, I wouldn't say I have symptoms of a ner nervous system fry, but I am hyper aware of the amount of Wi-Fi waves in the air, the amount of collective consciousness fear, and all of it is a part of me. So what I'm doing for myself in this time is taking the tranquility every day so that my nervous system stays in a balanced state because it is so, Deb, everything you said, it's like, it's the most intense year. It's the most beautiful year. It's the most opportunistic year. It's fucking hard and it's, relentless and it's never ending and we're all aware of that and it's okay and we can all do this and we're all going to do it together and we're all going to do it gracefully and the tranquility is all about grace and so mm -hmm. how can wh when do you feel the most graceful you feel the most graceful when you're relaxed so this tincture gets you into that state of relaxation and then you're able to process things from that lens if you process what's going on in this world through a stressful fear lens, you are so screwed. But if you can process what's going on right now from a relaxed state, you're actually going to be able to extract these medicinal pieces out of it of, oh my God, like, look at how I'm changing through this. Look at how I've adapted myself to be cool with change. Mm -hmm. Look at how easily I flow through all these weird, destructive things going on. So, wow. Look at how strong my immune system is. Like, to start teaching ourselves that those that those thought patterns are your medicine too. So yes, the internal drinking of the tincture is very beneficial, but a lot of what White Fox stands for is talking like this to our, our clients and our patients of where's your head at? What are your repetitive thoughts saying to you? Like, let's, let's bring that into the conversation because it's not just about taking something physically and then your symptoms are gone, but we're a multidimensional being. So make sure that we're aware of what our thoughts are. We're aware of how much time we're around the computer and the Wi-Fi waves. We're aware of if we're exercising, like all of that matters too. Yeah. And so for people who are listening rather than watching, I mean, I highly recommend you go to youtube.com slash Debbie Dashinger and watch this. This is a white fox. This is what I originally popped up. White fox repair remedy, full spectrum, CBD salve, reduce inflammation, antibacterial, heart opener, physical pain soother, relax muscles. So if just because like I like to ask these questions, what if I put this on my face? I do. You I do? put it on my face. Yeah. If I if I get sometimes they get acne before my moon. It's so good. And really, if, yeah, there just have an awareness around how close you get to your eyes because there is a peppermint essential oil in there, oh. but it is amazing to keep your skin supple. Like if you want to mm -hmm. do like all your whole neck and decolage and all this, you will wake up with some plump ass skin. It is awesome <laughs> for your face, girl. I do it a lot. That's actually why I do my boobs every night because like it keeps them very perky and it keeps the skin like I'm like 20. And so I massage it all up here and all over my boobs every night. And it's, um, it's really keeping them young. Okay. I can tell I'll be going through this one really fast <laughs> with all those, those descriptors, but you know, why not experiment? Mm -hmm. I, I love all of that. 
So this is Dare to Dream, Scarlett. What do you next dare to dream? What are your future dreams and goals? I am about to dream my star jumper temple. And I don't, I'm thinking maybe that's what I'll call it, but I'm going to get 40 acres and I'm going to build my dream property where animals and humans live as one. And every place that you go on the property has a healing activation. And that is what I'm manifesting right now. I'm currently looking at land. And my dream for that property is that people can come there and they can experience the world that I live in from my eyes and get to have that attunement and then go back out into the world and spread that message. If somebody is dealing with codependency and that's a problem, do you, do you have just a couple of tips or tools you can throw out there that people can start to play with? Mm -hmm. I would say whatever you focus on, you're going to amplify. So right now would be a great time to focus on sovereignty and to start learning what sovereignty means and start to learn how, where is that one place in your life that you can feel safe and good by yourself? Discover it, get, get into it, have that be your anchor for this transformation. So you always have that place to go back to and then shift your focus to sovereignty study sovereignty. Um, for me, because I'm a woman and because I'm doing so much goddess work, I would say my focus is on the female. And a lot of my suggestions are going to be really geared towards the feminine right now. So the, the book untamed for me was a great book on sovereignty. It was a great book on how a woman can step into a state of sovereignty for herself and how there really has been a lot of belief patterns around women needing a man or needing to go through a man. So it's deconstructing those layers of programming. The other thing that I would really recommend is the Sophia Code, which mm -hmm. is uh, the book Kaya Ra written, wrote, excuse me, her DNA activations. It is a living transcription. You are going to be receiving live vibrational healings while you listen to the audiobook or you read it that is sovereignty and actually oh my gosh so i got this necklace from her because it's sovereignty on the back mm -hmm. it's the prayer of sovereignty and then the patterns on the front are vibrational activations for the feeling of sovereignty so i would say when i was just learning how to get out of my codependent relationship last year with my my last partner and we went into this counseling situation which set me on this trajectory of sovereignty and it's to know it's a trajectory. You're not going to get there in a day. Be compassionate with yourself. Be kind to yourself. And remember, if you're focused on your codependence and what you need from another, that's going to amplify. So you really have to be responsible about training your own mind to focus on sovereignty long enough mm -hmm. to change the pattern. And long enough is going to be different for everybody. Have ever been scared going into any kind of, not just psilocybin, but any kind of plant medicine, don't know if you've done ayahuasca, San Pedro, DMT, MDMA, blah, blah, blah. Yeah. All, all of it, any of it. Have you ever been scared? Yeah, a lot. Most of the time, for sure. Mm -hmm. um, but, I, but my relationship to fear, I think, is different than other people's relationship to fear. To me, my relationship to fear means I'm breaking through something. And my whole reason for being is for breaking through. So when I get those feelings, it's a call to move through and I get excited and I can alchemize the fear inside of my system to become motivation, uh, which I actually love fear because I'm a fear crusher. And so I'm like, oh, like Toro Toro with a bull. I'm like, oh, afraid of that? I'm gonna fucking get that shit. But I actually program myself to be like that. I wasn't always like that. So. I did that work and I own it and I'm grateful I did that for myself. And it does serve me in psychedelics. And I've had a few ayahuasca journeys that I am being dismantled and it is four to five hours of excruciating pain, high fevers, lots of purging, lots of visions of what the depth of the density of this world looks like, which is pretty intensely scary on a human scale. And Whenever the lining of fear comes through my system, it's a call to break through. So I just dance with it differently. And I would say that's what I would suggest people to do. If you want to do psychedelics and you want to get a good takeaway from it, have your relationship to fear be one of positive change and then have your relationship to surrender be strong.
so that you can surrender to these medicines and you can be humble. And if you go in with respect and humility, you're going to have a much different experience as if you go in with, I'm going to take, oh, I'm gonna, I know what's going to happen. I know what I need. It's like, you're about to get slapped in the face without your attitude <laughs> because these are very strong powers. So I had a one girl that I just love dearly who loves White Fox. She wanted to try one of those chocolate psilocybin squares that I make and she had never done psilocybin. She was like, I'm nervous, but I'm called. And I was like, here, let me just send you one, try it. And she was nervous. So she just tried half. And she was like, you know, I didn't, I didn't feel anything. And I was like, okay, we both know that's not true. I was like, what did you feel? Did you feel a little lightheaded? Did you feel a little dizzy? She's like, yeah, actually I felt lightheaded and dizzy, but I didn't trip. And I was like, okay, so you have some idea. You have some projection in your head of what this should be like. And it's throwing a blanket over the fire of what your experience could be. But because you entered the trip with respect and humility, it didn't slap you in the face because you were childlike and you were curious. And so now like it's a psilocybin is a living entity and she has respect for psilocybin. So now she's going to take a higher dose of psilocybin and her relationship to the fear of it has changed. So in relationship of the whole picture of her with psilocybin, it's been divinely designed for her to have a slow, healthy entry into a deeper experience. If that makes sense. Mm. Where can people get your book, Psilocybin Transmissions, and where can they find your products? And I know your website is scarletravin.com, mm -hmm. but where can they go for everything about you? <laughs> Whitefoxnectars.com. So that will have all the CBD, that'll have my psilocybin book, that'll have the blog, link to the YouTube TV and all that stuff. Um, so whitefoxnectars.com is kind of the main hub for the medicine. Loved having you on the show. Thank you so much. Thanks, Debbie. I end today's show with this quote from Alberto Veloto. As the Lakota Sioux phrase, mitakaye oyasin, which means all my relations implies, we're all connected, all in this together. Recovery is reciprocal. Heal yourself, heal the world, heal the world heal yourself. Subscribe to the Dare to Dream podcast and hear this weekly number one transformation conversation. My guest next week is Joanne DiMaggio. She's an authority in ancestral memories, the universal collective and regression past life. She's a respected expert on the topic of reincarnation, life between lives, as well as soul writing. She's a PhD and the author of six books. Thanks for joining us today on this journey on Dare to Dream.